What's going on, doll fans? It is your boy Dylan, and uh, I'm making this video. So, uh, <coughs> really, there's just this uh, there's this one article that I want to read to you guys and go through and discuss. Uh, it's an article off of Dolphins Wire. Um, get to that in a minute, though. Uh, I also I did watch um, you know Dougley Do Wrong and K Flexen's response to the Minka Fitzpatrick trade. Uh, and so I will, I'm going to talk about that a little bit, um, and I'll put those videos into the description box so that way you guys can watch those for yourself. Um, also, by the way, anybody who thinks that like, I'm just hating on these guys, it's not true. We just have, we have differences and, uh, you know, I mean, I think Doug is trying super hard to, to convince himself, um, you know, of something that's just not real, uh, but whatever. You know, uh, but but look at the end of the day, I'm also I'm making sure that, you know, uh, I put their videos into my description box so that way you guys can go check them out for yourself. So, uh, you know, I'm helping to promote their channels as well by making those videos available to you, um, you know, not just not just talking about them. Right. And uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh you know, like I said, I got to keep it real with you guys. I got to, I got to speak the truth. And since I'm pretty much the only one that has the opinions and the, the perspectives that I do, um, you know, I gotta, I gotta challenge all the, the people. I gotta challenge everybody else because it's the mainstream media and it's, you know, other YouTubers. And I mean, it's mostly the media. <clears throat> so to be fair and to be, to be honest, um, Right, but I gotta challenge these guys when, when you know, when I mean, when I see fit, when I see you know, when I see a different perspective than they do, right? So there are times that we agree, right? Like most of the time, I I, I tend to agree with K Flex in, not always. Uh, and for example, and the, and there's a there's a pretty you know there's a di couple disagreements that I have with you know what he said. So let's get into it. So <clears throat> we'll start with K Flex in. Um, you know, so here's the thing. I mean, with, with him, he was basically saying that, uh, I mean, you know, he said that it's, it's, this is all crazy, but he said he agrees with the trade and that it's the best one. But some of the reasons why I used, first of all, he said, if it's, if it's the, if it's a fact that Minka only wants to play in the slot, then it's good because, a slot corner is not worth being taken in the first round and if we got a first round pick for a slot corner great okay I might agree with that but that's not the case Minka Fitzpatrick is naturally a free safety that's where he played just as much free safety in college as he did uh, uh, nickel corner slot corner right and only played boundary corner a little bit so and that's what we drafted him as a free safety right that was his intended purpose yes he's versatile yes he can play those positions does that mean he wants to no does that mean he should have to no okay obviously just because a, a player has versatility it's good so that's that's like saying okay right we want versatility across the offensive line just in case somebody gets hurt right I mean we don't have an offensive line period right now but let's say in the past right so let's say I don't know I mean let's okay let's take Tunsil right because he played guard in his first year because we had Brandon Albert at left tackle right that makes him more versatile it gives him more experience gives him you know the perspective of that position so all that's good but you still want Laramie Tunsil to play at left tackle because that's his his best position and and so on and so forth right now there was extenuating circumstances in year one right so okay but you still want be, and and if he had to move if he absolutely had to move okay fine but you know you want to keep the guys and that may not even be the best example but my point is is that you want up uh, because again you want the 11 best players on the field and you want guys to be in positions to you know make plays and so on and so forth right you want to put them in the best position possible that is free safety for minka fitzpatrick 
okay? And also, this narrative that seems to be cropping up, like, actually pretty recently, and of course, it's convenient because, uh of everything that's going on because people and this is going to doug like doug of course as i as i expected doug just started shitting on minka and saying that it's all his fault or whatever and that the dolphins and that this regime deserves no blame which just on its face is absolutely ridiculous because frankly both sides are involved in this so they're both they both have a part to play one way or the other but it's absolutely ridiculous so let me let me get into it right because he's saying he said first well uh you know um what do he say uh oh minka wanted the trade yeah of course he wanted the trade why wouldn't he want the trade right um and to to go to real quick with uh, TD had said in his video, you know, TD said that he wasn't being competitive. No, I think it is his competitive nature that he doesn't want to be in this massive dumpster fire that's going to take multiple years before you're even back to like mediocre or average. He's a competitor. No, he doesn't want to be part of this. He wants to be in a place where he has a chance to compete. So it totally makes sense. Again, though, it's also this front office, front office and coaching staff that has put this team on the field. Why are the players being blamed for the, the personnel that's in the building? They didn't make any of those decisions. They're not the ones that did the massive purge multiple times or, or do all these trades. It's not their choice. Yes, in the, in the one particular case, yes, Minka wanted out and he got out. Good for him because there's no reason why he should want to stay a part of this. Also, to the, to the point of tanking, no fan should ever be in favor of that. Did, you know, no, because as a lot of people are pointing to that, right? So first of all, a lot of people are saying that, oh, well, you know, we've been so bad for the past 20 years that, well, first of all, we've been mediocre. We've been average, right? We've been stuck in the middle. But comparison to what we are now, and this year is going to be historically bad. We are going, the 2019 Dolphins are going to be one of the worst teams ever in NFL history. So really, you want to go from mediocre to that, to the worst team in NFL history? Really, that's what you want? Even, even if, even if the gamble pays off and in a few years from now, we are back to relevance, right? Because we're not going to, we're not going to be fucking just winning Super Bowls all of a sudden. But you, if we're, if we're back to, to relevance, then really you want to suffer through this? Like, come on, dude. No, and that's why it's okay that he wanted to get out and he should want to get out. No player should want to be part of this this nonsense, right? So, you know, Doug just started blaming him, saying it's like, you know, his fault that the Dolphins weren't actively trading him. Okay, so what the fuck does that mean? They still did the trade at the end of the day, because guess what? They have the power to say no. They don't get credit for not actively trading him. They still traded him. Yes, it was at his request, and for good reason, but they still actively traded it. I mean, they still traded him, whether they were actively searching for trade partners before he requested it or not. That is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. So to use that as a defense for them is just absurd. And again, they're the one that's fielding this team. They're the ones that decided to let so many people go and do all these trades. It's not the players' fault, so stop blaming the fucking players, right? So, um, you know, back to K Flex real quick. So, you know, he's like, he's like, um, you know. So I disagree with the 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 point that he makes that that. But he's it, to be fair, to be fair, he does say if K Flex or if Minka Fitzpatrick only wants to play the slot. But again, there's been actually no indication of that, right? Absolutely no indication of that. He said that he wants to play at free safety, that he likes it, that he's good at it. He said he's also good at, at slot and he's cool to play that. He just doesn't want to play six different positions on a super garbage team that obviously does not give two fucks about winning this year or even potentially next year. Why would he want to waste the prime years of his career in a super violent game where he could get hurt at any time just to waste those years in this mess? Why would he want that? Is the most illogical thing. 
and to be blamed for that uh, but i mean it makes sense because fans don't uh, most of the time <clears throat> People don't, and the media, it's driven by the media. This is why I actually have a bit of an issue with, with like, you know, Doug's, you know, just vehement desire, desire to sell himself on falsehoods because then he spreads this message to thousands of people. Anyway, but people just don't want to fucking, you know, they just don't like looking at reality um, for what it really is, right? But look, the dude, he, he doesn't even have the body frame and and the skill set and stuff to ble to play linebacker and to play uh you know strong safety but that's what he was being asked to do this year he wasn't being asked to do that last year right gase asked him to play a little bit of boundary corner or a, a good amount of it because we didn't have a cornerback capable opposite Xavier howard so we needed to move some pieces around a little bit and especially then once we started getting um you know tons of injuries right so again that's another area where i disagree with k flexen right because i don't think gase mishandled him at all i think he was doing used him where he needed to and a little bit extra out of necessity but brian flores decided to just throw all kinds of other shit that d doesn't need to be on this kid's plate and of course he doesn't shouldn't want to to deal with that of course of course watch and so K Flexen also said that if they use him at free safety in Pittsburgh, he's going to be a little upset. Guess I can virtually guarantee you safety will be, or Minka will be at safety uh, in Pittsburgh. Maybe he might play some slot corner, but I guarantee you they are going to use him at the positions he's used or that he's most natural at and fits, right? But also, too. The thing that I was saying is cropping up, or that I didn't really finish saying earlier, the thing that's cropping up is everybody's like, uh, his versatility, his versatility. So because he's a versatile player and because he can play free safety and slot corner really well and does okay at boundary, although had some serious struggles, if we're being fair, right? Because of those things, because he has that versatility, because he was branded with the label of uh, Swiss Army Knife, so that automatically makes it okay for a coaching staff to add a few more positions into that, expanding his load. That means he's he's doing he's playing like half the defensive positions. Boundary corner, free safety, strong safety, and the linebacker positions. That's like almost the entire defense. So because he's a versatile player, it's it's just okay to throw half the defense on him. And especially when it's positions like strong safety and and linebacker that are not scoot, scooted suited to his skill set or his body frame. No, that doesn't make any fucking sense at all. And again, just a illegitimate defense for this regime and for you know, like you're you're blaming Fitzpatrick because he doesn't want to put his body on the line in positions that he doesn't play, he, he's never played, he's not good. He didn't play those positions in college. He did not. So, you know, the fact or the claim that he did is not factual. So, and, but Doug said that. Those, you know, those were some of Doug's claims. So like I said, I mean, I kind of expected Doug to just like shit on Minka and just defend uh, this regime. And then look, you know, the Steelers are struggling. Ben Roethlisberger's out. Is it the case that they could end up having a lower draft pick in the first round than than what expected? Sure, maybe, right? And do we have three first rounds now? Yeah. Okay, great. But again, it's a massive gamble. You're just you're just you're just willy nilly getting right now. Again, it to be fair, Minka did request the trade. And again, rightfully so, because all of the damage has already been done, right? But anyway, so you're just willy-nilly cutting and trading all of these players that, you know, all of your talent, your leadership, your production, your experience across the board, right? <clears throat> and I, I mean, like, it's just, it's, it's absolute absurdity right like why why <clears throat> well you, you're you're clearly not trying to win you're you're clearly tanking right <clears throat> 
But why, why would these players be bought in? Why would they want to be part of this system? It just, it doesn't make any sense. And again, like it's a process that nobody should want. No fan should ever like, okay, this. No fan should ever okay, even potentially creating your team uh, or making your team the worst team in NFL history. But like, I mean, through two games, two games, we are already historically bad. And it's not going to it's not going to let up anyway but what i was saying though is, is yeah we have all these draft picks and this capital but or, or um uh cap space but you still got to use it right and you're still super gambling all these dudes tonsil uh tonsil uh Juwan james Tannehill, uh frank gore kiko alonzo uh cameron wake william hayes you know, Robert Quinn and Andre Branch. I, I was okay with getting rid of those two, but even still, I, just look at these names. TJ McDonald, right? Now Minka Fitzpatrick. I, I mean, Kenyon Drake could end up leaving at some point, which is not out of the, the realm of, uh, you know, possibility. It's very much in the realm of possibility, right? Like, I mean, all of these names, all of this production, leadership, talent, just gone, gone, gone. And for what? So you can gamble? So maybe, hopefully, possibly you can hit right? Like, come on, dude. And, okay, so let me go ahead and, and, and continue on real quick. Uh, let me get to this. Let me get to this article. So it's on Dolphins Wire. No, the Dolphins aren't ruining their culture with roster purge. Which, if you watched my videos, you guys know that I actually vehemently disagree with that. The, 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 the culture that they're instilling is super toxic. They're real quick. They're saying they're saying that um, if you come here, we're gonna work you to the bone in practice because they are. That's what <clears throat> that's what uh, Brian Flores is doing. He's and there have been multiple reports on it that that he's literally just like running them ragged in practice. So you're gonna have to deal with that. If you come here, there's gonna be no loyalty whatsoever from. The coaching staff are from this front office. Absolutely none, right? Um, <clears throat> if you step out of line at all, you're gone. If you just, for whatever, I mean, a lot of these were just absolutely nonsensical reasons, right? Um, like TJ McDonald, they even said, oh no, he's a really good player and he is a good scheme fit. Oh, so why'd you get rid of him? I don't know. What do you mean? Like, just no reason at all. And then so, you know, they said that Vincent Taylor wasn't a scheme fit. There's another name for you. But I've, I, I'm calling bullshit on that. Because, I mean, and one, just for, just for the, uh, for one, if that was the case, why'd you do it right before the start of the season? Why couldn't you have done it weeks earlier? It took you that long to figure that out? Also, I mean, look at the TJ McDonald situation. They openly said he's not a scheme fit uh, issue, but got rid of him anyway. So the argument of scheme fit doesn't really seem to hold much water, right? <clears throat> I mean, uh, and then and then on top of that, then you have the way that um, he handled Kenny Stills. Completely fucked up. Kenny Stills was doing the right thing, right? And he, again... He, it's not like it's not like he came out and said, you know, Stephen Ross is a bad person. It's not like he advocated for him to sell the team like I do, right? None of none of that kind of shit happened. He didn't call him names. All he did was is he tweeted out and he said, you know, having and I'm paraphrasing, having a fundraiser for Donald Trump goes against the mission statement of the organization Rise, which Ross is the head of and and owns and founded, right? Because it does. If you support and and uh, financially support and, and have a fundraiser to get President Trump reelected, the dude is a racist, a bigot, a misogynist, all those things, xenophobe, all those things. So you are by proxy all of those things. Because at the end of the day, Stephen Ross is a white male billionaire and he doesn't, and he even said it himself, he even said it himself. I'm not a ra I'm not a racist, but his racism isn't isn't uh a deal breaker for me 
Those are his words. Okay? So, sorry, no. You failed the purity test, bro. And you were, at the very least, by proxy all of those things. Right? So, he just made a simple statement, a simple factual statement that those two things are, uh, you know, absolutely contradictory to one another. They do not mesh. And then, then what? Right? So, Brian Flores claimed that, you know, he played the eight straight Jay-Z songs to, so, to, so that way, you know, Kenny Stills wouldn't be a distraction. No, they amplified the distraction and then punished him. They became the distraction, right? He was just doing the right thing. They could have squashed it, you know, Flores could have squashed it by being like, yeah, you know, I support the players to, uh, uh, you know, uh, right to protest and just left it there and just left it there but what happened his first statement was oh he should have talked to ross first and again who in their right fucking mind thinks that kenny stills would have gone to ross and and said hey you know i want to i want to publicly make a statement that uh you supporting donald trump go conflicts with you know the mission statement arise do you really does anybody really think ross would have been like yeah man cool just go out and 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 make me look bad in the public of course not of course not <clears throat> and that's not what activism is about you don't go and ask permission for the person or the the entity that you're uh you know speaking out against that's retarded and ridiculous that's really fascist shit to say right in fact so no right so he shouldn't have talking or spoke to uh, to stephen ross beforehand that was the first misstep then his second statement was is that he needs to be more of a company man no then you completely lost me because you're just telling him shut the fuck up bow your head do what we say and you know that's it and and no absolutely not i say hell no to that then he decides he wants to play eight straight Jay-Z songs because he, he decide because Kenny Stills criticized Jay-Z for the way he's handling everything, right? With the this this deal with the NFL just seems to be more of a fucking money grab. And and matter of fact, also it's it seems like a front to white or to to um to launder the image of the NFL because, you know, of all the problems that they're having. I'm not going to get into that because that's a whole nother conversation. But, right? So he criticized that. So Brian Flores decides to brazenly just play eight straight Jay-Z songs. How is that trying to minimize the distraction? No, that amplifies it. Are you stupid? Like, really? And then so, of course, you know, Kenny Stills then responds by playing some Nas songs at his locker. But, the, but of course, why would you expect there not to be a response? But then, of course, they make it even worse by trading him because now you're being punitive. Sure, he's got a job still and he's still making, you know, good money in Houston. But if they would have just outright cut him, then it would have been directly affecting him uh, financially. Now, of course, Kenny Stills would have landed somewhere, but that's not the point. This organization took punitive mes measures against him in large part because of his activism so i'm sorry they have no grounds to stand on with me and yes that's creating a massively toxic culture everything that they're doing is creating a toxic culture players that you know could possibly come here like clowny for example don't want to players that are here are getting the fuck out it's not just minka do you think that do you think that cameron wake when he saw everything that was going on, when he saw Adam Gase get fired, because again, Adam Gase, when he got fired, had a line of players and coaches outside of his door to wish him well and so on and so forth. Okay? So, Cameron Wake, right? Juwan James. Some of these guys had to have been thinking, man, this is, and, and it probably, you know, since watching everything that's happened since they've left, it probably been like, man, I'm dodging a fucking bullet. Right? Like, all these guys, why would they want to be here part of, and part of this? There's still apparently some other veterans on the team, right? Because uh, when the when the reports initially came out that there were players wanting trades, of course, first, you know, people like Doug were like, oh, no, that's not true. 
Oh, lo and behold, it's true. But not only that, let's not forget there were at least two other players in the in that uh, conversation. And this is only gonna get worse. Do you think? Do you think that all of a sudden it's all gonna go away? No, he's gonna continue losing players. This culture is as toxic as it could possibly be. Let's continue on and debunk the rest of this though. Uh, there sure is a lot of pushback against the Miami Dolphins decision making over the course of the last two or three weeks. Rightfully so, and it's actually the decision making process that started with the firing of Adam Gase and everything that's happened since then. So it's not just the past few weeks. I know that there, matter of fact though, I know that there are a bunch of, this is, uh, philosophical bandwagoners, right? So what I mean by that is, is before the trade of Laramie Tunsil, Almost nobody, right? The vast majority of the media, right? The other YouTubers and a lot of the fans, the vast majority of the fans are like, no, we're not tanking. There's still a bunch of naive fools out there that are, are you know, saying that we're not tanking and that we can still win games and that blah, 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 things are going to be bright and beautiful someday in the fucking who knows when future, right? Uh, but since the Laramie Tunsil trade and everything that's happened since then, the narrative has been, of course, shifting to, of course we're tanking, of course we're tanking. I mean, how could you deny it? The vast majority of people now are admitting that. But of course, too late to the fucking party. I've been saying this from the fucking beginning. Anyway, many have come out to speculate that the Dolphins are being counterproductive by trading good players. Absolutely correct or worse yet unhealthily impacting players remaining on the roster by further alienating them without good players Yes, but it's also the disloyalty saying that you know, it do doesn't matter. We'll just get rid of you you know, like the very dictatorial way that they're like, you know running this fucking organization No, dude, none of none of this is good, which is kind of the point why? Again, I, so I go back, that's the point. Why would any Dolphins fan want that? Why would any real Dolphins fan want that? Think about it, right? Because people want to like try and hate on me and tell me I'm not the real Dolphins fan because I'm so heavily criticizing everything that they're doing. No, that makes me a real Dolphins fan because I can see the reality. I'm not going to just blindly accept the fucking dictator's words that, you know, everything's going to be fucking good and that I should trust the process and uh, that we're not tanking when I can see with my own fucking eyes. I'm not stupid. I'm an intelligent person who's capable of logic and reason. Okay. So I'm not going to just blindly believe that shit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and I mean, again, like, why would any fan want this to be the process again? Right. I get it. I get it. Everybody's all frustrated because we've been mediocre the past few decades. I got it. I got it. But it just blows my mind. How people can think the answer to that is let's make ourselves a million times worse. Even if, again, it doesn't work in the NFL, but even if you thought the tanking strategy could work <clears throat> and pay off in a few years, even if you thought that was the case, why would you want to endure the worst team in NFL history. Why would you want to endure that? Self-inflicted though. Self-inflicted. It's not by happenstance. We're not just going to, it's not just so happen, uh, you know, we're not going to just so happen to be the worst team in NFL history. You know, it didn't just so happen that um, we got beat by the, the Ravens 59 to 10 and they set multiple franchise records and we set multiple worst franchise records right? It's not just happenstance. It didn't happen, you know, just because of some random shit. No, it's because of the decisions that were made by this organization and by this franchise and by this, this front office and this coaching staff and this ownership. It was their decisions. 
right? Oh yeah, and then you throw in, now there are several reports out about that um, Gase was actually fired in part because uh, Stephen Ross wanted him to tank this year. And he said no. Let's also remember in that press conference where, you know, they were asking Adam Gase if, if he was worried about getting fired or whatever. And he's like, I don't need to lobby for my job. Good. That's the kind of attitude that I want from a head coach, right? Gase, dude, Gase was a great leader and he was working in the right. So, so not only did he get fired for having some integrity, right? And, and not wanting to disrespect the game, not wanting to disrespect his, 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 his locker room, right? And if he did that, if he all of a sudden said, you know, we're going to, we're going to lose games and tank, he would have lost the locker room which he had a really good rapport with. All indications. There are people out there that's saying that the locker room didn't like him, but, but there's no indication of that whatsoever. Not a single shred of evidence. Except for maybe you might be able to find some random article somewhere that some media fucking dude on some random website wrote. But no evidence. He would have lost the locker room. So not only that, but then he also gets fired for a bunch of things that were out of his control. A hurricane, an AWOL linebacker, losing your uh, your bye week and having to play 16 straight games. The the rash of injuries, which by the way, he seems to be having that effect, that unfortunate effect in, in New York right now. I mean, he's lost both his quarterbacks and a bunch of other key contributors, so I feel bad for him there. Uh, he is getting a rough start. And look, I mean, I might be wrong. It, it might turn out that I'm wrong about the Jets this year, uh, you know, about making it into second. Uh, looks like, I mean, so it's only two games, but, you know, the Bills are, are looking pretty damn good and the Jets are struggling, but it is in large part because of, of injuries. Also, it is his first year as the head coach there. So he does need to have time to instill his culture and get, a, <clears throat> you know, guys that he wants. There were reports and articles about how... <clears throat> You know, he didn't really want Le'Veon Bill. He didn't want to to spend all that money and stuff, right? Some of these big name guys that they got, he didn't really want to do that. So he needs to have some time to build his culture. And again, I'm betting that even if it's not this year, he will get that franchise to a good position and have a lot of success as the head coach of the Jets if he's given the proper time. Uh, but anyway, so he got fired for things because he wouldn't tank and because he has integrity, dis doesn't want to disrespect the game, the fan base, or the locker room, and for things out of his control. But all of this stuff that's, all of the results that, and, and so, and so the results that we reaped on the field were not his fault. You can't blame him for all those injuries and all of that crazy shit that's happening. The results on the field were in large part due to all of those uncontrollable things that happened. But the results on the field right now are directly related and correlate to the decisions made by this front office and this coaching staff. Okay? That's why it's absurd to blame the players. You, you, it doesn't matter how hard they try when they're on the field. We are outmatched, outgunned across the board. They can try as hard as they want. They will not win and they will lose in epic fashion as they have. It's not their fault. They need to stop being blamed for this. And it shouldn't be the fucking point, like this dude is saying. It shouldn't be, be, be the point. We should not be aiming to be this fucking bad. None of this was necessary. The Miami Dolphins organization has spent much of the last decade floundering in mediocrity, brewing a complacent culture and mentality for many, but not all, players in the locker room. Okay, that was the case until Adam Gase. Absolutely. We've been stuck in mediocre, mediocrity. But then Gase had a surprise. Uh, he did a phenomenal job with a mediocre team in 2016. Went, took us 10 and 6 into the playoffs. But then he had a couple down seasons because of all of the uncontrollable things. He did not have control over that stuff. So I, I don't know how much. Like it's just. But, but people still want to blame him for it. Like, really? Like, how would you feel if you were blamed for things out of your control? Right? 
My guess is those people that are still blaming him for all that shit would whine and cry and bitch and moan like little bitches if they were blamed for something that they, you know, didn't do, right? If they were accused of something they didn't do. They would be little snowflakes and start fucking whining and crying and play the victim role, you know, immediately and vehemently. Because they're fucking hypocrites. Because they're just giant fucking hypocrites. Anyway, so yes, we were mediocre, uh, but Gase was getting us going in the right direction. He was building a culture, right? Jerome Baker said it, you know, we'd like to ask him about this or that, but we're afraid because, you know, we don't want to lose our jobs. That's not the right kind of culture to have. You don't have a culture, right? And Brian Flores had even said it himself too, uh, paraphrasing here, but something along the lines of like, yeah, you know, when I was a position coach, I was more of like, you know, a player's coach, but now I'm kind of like isolated and alone as the head coach. You don't have to be, that's your choice. You could be friendly and cool with your players and not be a complete dick to them, not lie to their faces and say that we're not tanking when we are, you know, not telling Laramie Tunsil that uh, he's not going to get traded and then trade him. Not, you know, being a complete sellout dick prick to fucking Kenny Stills and, and backing the white male billionaire, right? Like, I mean, come on, dude. You are doing this. It is your fucking fault. And now, again, though, fine. We were stuck in mediocrity. But the answer to, to uh, the issue of mediocrity isn't to be historically bad. That's absolutely ridiculous. Especially in the NFL where tanking doesn't work. There's no legitimate fucking uh, example where tanking really worked, you know, to the point of creating this, you know, super relevant competitive dynasty or whatever, right? It might work for like, you might get a, you know, a little bit of a rebound and some some you know some false hope but there's really nothing to indicate that the, especially to this level first of all we've never even as far as i can tell i've only been around for 30 years and and i've only been a, a football fan for like 20 right and and whatever but you know i mean from all, all the information i've seen articles reports all kinds of you know research on the internet all kinds of you write lots of information from lots of different places. There's never been a, a tank job to this level. I mean, it's just craziness. And from the end of 2018 to the start, and, and then, but it's funny though, because even in this article, he lays out reasons why this won't be successful. So let me continue. From the end of the 2018 to the start of two, Miami has purged more than 60% of their roster filling in many of the blanks with underachievers or less than qualified starters as at the professional football level. As I've been saying for a while, across the board, just clear and clear downgrades. But but he's proving his point wrong with this with these comments. Like are you serious? If you purge 60% of the roster and then and then fill those holes with just utter clear downgrades, what do you mean? How, how do you not realize that that is amplifying and improving the point correct that the culture is being set wrong? Because the, what do you think, what kind of messages do you think that sends to the players? Like, are you kidding me? Which again is the point. Why, and, and I say again, why is that the point? Why, why, like, he's trying to argue that they are not ruining the culture, ruining the culture, but... The evidence that he cites proves the opposite, and then he's saying that this is the point. So he's he's trying to argue that the culture is not being ruined, but his arguments and his evidence are counterfactual to what he's trying to prove, right? So in other words. The evidence that he's citing actually proves that the culture is being bred toxic. And but then he's saying that that's the point. Because when the Dolphins kick off their 2020 season, what percentage of players are going to be here that were on the roster in 2019? It's pretty safe to say the number will again be less than half. Okay. 
But then again, that proves my point that this is a multi-year tank job. Because if we have less than half of these players, which I think is a logical uh, projection, if we have less than half the players that we have on the team right now next year, if you do that again, bro, what the fuck do you think that sends to the locker room? What message do you think it sends to the locker room? And frankly, the rest of, of the league. Again, you're just gonna ex you're just gonna uh, expound upon the the fact that no player wants to be here or come here. You're not gonna be able to build shit. Even players from the draft aren't gonna want to come here. They can say no. They can say no. I don't want to go play for this piece of shit fucking team. I mean. The Dolphins have been very clear that they want a very particular me mental makeup for their cornerstones. First of all, they haven't really been clear on anything. Even in a lot of their answers, they're super vague or just don't give any. Okay? So they're not clear on shit. But here's what they want. They want passionate, loves the game of football, selfless, and hard worker. I'll get to it in a second, but later he says Minka didn't make the cut. Okay. Minka didn't make the cut. Doug says they weren't actively shopping him. So apparently he did make the cut. Because the team didn't want to get rid of him, right? According to Doug and to, according to other players. Right? So uh, according to the team, he is passionate, loves the game, selfless, and a hard worker. But then you have guys like... TD who are like, oh, him wanting to be traded shows that he's not competitive. No, I disagree. I think that's exactly the opposite because it's clear that this team is not going to be even close to competitive, let alone win this year. So you're telling me that for a player to prove their passion, love for the game and their competitive competitiveness and stuff like that, they have to just endure being absolutely trash? No. Hell no. I think it shows his desire to be competitive far more that he wants to go to a team where he has a much better chance. And passionate, loves the game of football, selfless, right? Loves the game of football. Another reason why you'd want to leave. Because it is disrespectful to the game, to the players, to the fan base to adopt the process of tanking. And then it's even more disrespectful to then lie to everybody brazenly about it. It shows his passion that, you know, after that massive debacle, he went to his agent was like, dude, I love this game. You know, I bust my ass for it. I'm a hard worker, right? And that's the thing, right? He came from Alabama. He came from Nick Saban's program up until this, literally right up until Minka asked for this trade. Everybody, not a single person would say that Minka Fitzpatrick isn't passionate, doesn't love the game, isn't selfless, and isn't a hard worker. Nobody, not a single person ever. But all of a sudden, Minka's the bad guy because he doesn't want to be part of this nonsense. If you're not those things, you're probably going to have your toes stepped on as, a, as Miami flushes the final remnants of Mike Tam Tannenbaum's tenure with the team down the toilet. And even if you are those things, this year is going to stink. But it's football. And it is ultimately one year to whitewash all the bad that has brewed here for so many years and left unchecked. Dude, this shit is just fucking stupid, bro. It's... So yes, the next 14 games will probably stink just as much as the first two did. But that's why Miami wants particular players committed to their craft. Dude, again, it's a super violent sport. You're not going to get guys that are going to be willing to go through this year after year. Or even for a single year. Like, it's ridiculous. Fitzpatrick didn't make the cut. But they may end up getting a better pick for him than they spent uh, to bring him in. Again, though, key emphasis is emphasis on may they're super gambling super gambling and it's not gonna pay off 
It's unfortunate, but it's a decision Fitzpatrick made and the Dolphins broke even for a player who didn't want to be a part of what they're building. Okay, yeah, sure, whatever. That's fine because probably 80% of the players who are here won't be part of what the Dolphins are building beyond the next two years. So if that's the case, again, that doesn't set a good message, that doesn't build a good culture, that doesn't allow you to win next year. It's a multi-year tank then, if that's the case. And if that was if that was the case, then why would he want to be here? So the ramifications of a bad year on the gridiron really are inconsequential at best. Wrong. That is categorically false. They are massively consequential at least. At least. If you didn't get fucking demolished 59 to 10 in the Ravens game, Mika Fitzpatrick wouldn't have... And if you weren't playing him at totally unnecessary positions that don't suit his skill set or his body type... He wouldn't have asked for the trade. So the results on the field are massively consequential. Like, it's just, it's, it's, it's insanity. And uh, just real quick, uh, the Dolphins apparently are going to be going with Ryan Fitzpatrick against, uh, against the Cowboys. So... They're going to be stubborn. They're going to hold on because they're trying to be as bad as possible. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty convinced though that, I mean, yeah, no, literally it has to be, it has to be either Fitzpatrick gets like hurt bad enough, right? Either he has to get hurt bad enough that he just has to come out or it's going to have to be a stretch of these historically bad games, which we've already had our first two games of the year, both historically bad. So, uh, you know, we got to have, I don't know, one, two more of these historically bad games before it switches. I don't know. I don't know. Before they put Rosen out there. I mean, maybe not because, because... As long as, as long as Fitzpatrick doesn't get hurt, which, I mean, he had a gash on his nose. You know, he took many big shots in both these games. I don't know that the production on the field will will get this coaching staff to switch it out. Because they, they that's what they want. Whether they say it or not, that's what they want. They are trying to be as bad as possible. It's as clear as, as, as could be to anyone who isn't actively trying to to blind themselves or to anyone who is just too stupid to see it. So, um, I mean, look, man, people can hate on it all you want and you can deny it for as long as you want. But I've already been proven right on several things. I'm close to being proven right on a couple others. And my guess is, is that I'm going to continue to be proven right over the course of this year and next year. I mean, we'll see, man. We'll see, dude. Like, if, if people really want to go through this whole mess for some, you know, hope and dream and, you know, possibility that maybe we can get things right in a few years from now, I mean... That shit's ridiculous, and I can't be on board with that. So I'm gonna keep, you know, I'm gonna keep doing what I do, and I'm gonna keep speaking the truth. And you know, it's up to everybody has their decisions to make. Either, either you can just, you know, lay down and accept this, or you can get on board with not accepting it and accepting the reality of the situation. And you know, join me to help to to try and get this thing fixed, man. Because you know, I'm. I'm going to I'm going to do everything I can. I mean, I have, you know, I have limited limited control, limited power, but you know, I'm not going to just talk about these things. I'm not going to just speak the truth and give you guys the facts, but I'm going to try and do everything that I can and as this channel grows and everything, 
more will be able to be done but you know i'll do everything that i can I, I, everything i can at every stage to try and actually get some some change and for me the biggest thing is getting stephen ross out and so that's why i started the petition to force stephen ross to sell the team so <clears throat> If you're tired of this and if you don't want to have to sit through this nonsense for the next several years in hopes that we're going to maybe one day be back to even just mediocre, then, you know, not only, you know, subscribe to the channel, but but sign that petition and because it's it's people powered and we and it's going to take it's going to take a large coalition of, of the fan base to, to get it done. So anyway, with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy my videos and my perspective. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comment section. And of course, as always, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I am out. I'll see y'all soon. Fins up.